Very important is the boundary conditions module where you actually uh, bring life into your simulation and there you tell the system what's going on. You can define Norman type uh, boundary conditions which are called uh, loads in Abacus. You can define directly type boundary conditions which are only called BCs in Abacus as you can see here and here. We learn also about the application to the model and to understand uh, how it's behave. All right, let's get started. Let us now talk about the application of boundary conditions here in Abacus. So the, I want to first delete my second instance again. Okay, and now my interaction is also quite useless. So I can also uh, delete this because there is no second uh, interaction partner anymore. The boundary conditions um, include loads and uh, the classical boundary conditions. So if we double click on boundary conditions, uh, we are presented with a variety of options and same that applied for the interaction applies for the boundary conditions. You define it per step. However, uh, it's taken over to the next step if you do not change it. The things you quite often use in metal forming analysis is uh, symmetry. So think about a lot of example like uh, deep drawing or uh, three-point bending or even in many bulk forming operations you can find a lot of uh, symmetry planes. So always make use of symmetry. There is no other thing than a quite educated use of symmetries which saves you so much computational time. So it's very useful. So even in our case you could think about this that along, so if we um, fix the beam uh, on the end close to the origin and then apply a load on top of here, you can easily say that along this plane here in the, here in the middle of the vertical plane in the middle of the body, this would also be a symmetry plane. So we can um, save the left or the right of the body, so to say. Um, however, so if we click on continue, it asks us um, which surface we want to apply the boundary conditions to and it's the um, rear face of the body. We, so we rotate it now, we click the rear face, we click on done and then we are presented the options. So in our case um, we use an encaster option or we could also use the pin option but always use encaster because then you don't forget if you are dealing with elements that really have rotational degrees of freedom. Okay, so as I said, we want to fix the rear face. So now all the elements part of this set cannot move at all. So in order to um, apply some sort of um, further boundary condition, we could now apply, for example, a load here. Um, and uh, this would be done using um, the load. So this could be like a line load, for example. Okay, if we could, for example, use a concentrated uh, force on these two nodes. And uh, a very important aspect uh, would be follow nodal rotation. So if we would apply in the downward uh, manner. So it's minus, uh, I don't know, 200 Newton. And if we do not check this, the force will always be um, applied in vertical direction. If they rotate, um, then it will be applied perpendicular to uh, these nodes. Um, as viewed from the initial position. So um, this is the concept of follower forces. Um, however, for example, we could alternatively, and I want to show you this, um, 
use velocities. I prefer to um, get used to applying boundary conditions in velocities, not in terms of displacements, because if you switch a lot of um, uh, between explicit dynamic analysis and the static analysis, it's useful to work in all the time in velocities. So for example, you could define a downward velocity here of this edge. So this would be again, it's x direction, y direction, z direction, and it's minus five in y direction. Why, is it, why does it make a difference to um, check or uncheck these zeros here? Because as you might um, know, um, this edge would move in minus z direction following a circular part if I only push downward on this edge. So by forcing it to stay uh, zero in z direction, I, I will further indru, induce an elongation, uh, elongational stress, so a tensile stress to the entire specimen. So just by unchecking this velocity, which is multiplied by the times, um, which gives you then the full displacement, this will change a lot in terms of a boundary condition. So this is an, a source of error, which a lot of people um, do because they don't really think about how do my boundary conditions reflect the true nature of my problem. So always think about, okay, this is the problem I was given and how do my boundary conditions have to look like in order um, to depict um, this problem. So I will um, check this and I know this means, so to say, I like I have, I glue this line onto um, a wall and then just move the wall downwards, so to say. Okay, the nice thing is it shows me basically what I have done. So um, it shows you, okay, it's fixed um, in two directions and I don't want to hear any comments on how this thing now looks. Um, and so it will move downwards while the other two directions uh, are fixed.